So we're going to work on drawing straight line graphs with a table. And just to be clear about the difference between a line and a pattern for us is that the patterns that we've often been plotting have been things like, you know, um, the first design of matchsticks takes four, or if the first design takes four matchsticks, the second design might take eight matchsticks, the third design might take twelve matchsticks, we end up with a series of points that look as if they could sit on a line if you were to connect them. But they're individual points for specific whole numbers in a way, like the first pattern, the second pattern, the third pattern that we build. A line is literally drawing the line where it's a rule that allows us to have an infinite number of points along that line. So here we could actually put an infinite number of points and they would all blur together to make that one solid line. Versus the points in the pattern are what we call discrete and they're kind of stepped out and separate from each other and we can see them going along like little stair steps going up versus the line, they all blend together and we end up drawing just the straight line. So to do these we're going to make ourselves a table and we notice again on most graphs y is to the sky and x is pointing along the horizontal axes and in your table I always want you to put x first and then y. So always x first and again similar to plotting it out for a pattern, what it's equal to is always going to be on the right side of the table and what we're substituting or what we're using to find that is always going to be on the left side of the table. So x is always first. x first in the table, then y every time. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually just pick values of y. So we can think about it and just make up some values. You could pick 420 and negative 799 if you felt like it, but those are a bit awkward to calculate with and not very helpful for us. So you might just think about simple values, like maybe 1, 2, and 3 to start with. So what happens once you've picked your x values, we're going to substitute them into the rule to get the y values. So my rule currently says y is equal to 3 times x minus 1. Remember, if it's 3x, there's a little invisible time sign between the two. So what I'm going to do is replace x with 1 because I'm saying on this first bit of the table, I'm going to decide that x is equal to 1. So instead of writing x, I'm going to say 3 times 1 minus 1 and calculate to see what that's equal to. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is 2. For the next row, now I'm going to say that x is equal to 2. So when x is equal to 2, I'll say 3 times 2 minus 1 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. For the next bit. I've decided that I'm going to call x equal 3 here. So I'm going to say 3 times 3 minus 1 equals... so 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 is going to be 8. And I could keep going. We could try 4. So again, what I'm saying is that when x is equal to 4, I'm going to put that into the rule. So instead of saying 3 times x minus 1, I'm going to say 3 times 4 minus 1. So 3 times 4 minus 1. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 1 is 11. So those are the first points now. I've got a pair, because remember what you need to actually draw a point on a line is an x, y coordinate to get that point. So if we've picked values, we've substituted the x values in to get the rule for the, or using the rule to get the y values, and now we can plot these points. Because what we have here is 1, 2. That's really what we've solved for. When x is equal to 1, y must be equal to 2. And the next one would be when x is equal to 2, y must be equal to 5. So what this rule does is kind of like generate 
I like to think of them as dancing partners. If I tell it that I want x, I, I have x equals 1, and I need to know who it has to go with, it's going to calculate that when x is equal to 1, it has to be together with number 2. And when x is equal to 2, it has to be with y is equal to 5. And what we'll notice as we start to put these points in, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 5, well the other ones don't actually fit on here, 3 comma, it would be way up there, but we would notice that we'll start to get very much a straight line as we go along here. And one thing that you will also find out is that sometimes we'll pick easy values like 1, 2, 3, but that's not given us a whole bunch of information, so it might be helpful to try a few negatives or something like 0. So let's experiment with that. Let's try 0 and let's also try negative 2. Just to see when x is equal to 0, what does y have to be equal to? And when x is equal to negative 2, or sorry, when x is equal to negative 2, what does y have to be equal to? So here again, substituting it in, 3 times 0 minus 1 equals, well, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is still minus 1. And for the next one, 3 times negative 2 minus 1 equals, so 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and negative 6 minus 1 turns it to negative 7. So now we've got two more points we can draw onto the graph. The reason we haven't put the other ones in is because they don't really fit, my scale only goes up to 5. So, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 1, so when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 1, and when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative 7. So when x is negative 2, y is negative 7. Which again, doesn't really fit on the graph, but if you imagine minus 6, minus 7, somewhere down here, that would be our point. Now, once you've done a few points, aim for maybe 3 or 4, you can now connect the dots. And the reason we can connect the dots here is because we're telling you that it's a line. You can actually have all the values in between. So I'm going to use a ruler, which is always hard on this tablet screen, to try to draw a straight line between those three points. Put an arrow on the end and make sure it goes through both the axes. So I'll label that for rule number A, or equation A. So that blue line represents all the possible pairs that we could have when y is equal to 3 times x minus 1. Okay. Let's look at the next two and try and speed up the process a little bit for it. Use a different color. Again, first thing you need to do is make your table. And it's always x first, then y. And seeing that I have both negative x values and positive x values, I might try maybe a few of each. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So negative 2, I'm going to take x is equal to negative 2 and literally substitute it in for x. So 6 minus 2 times negative 2 is equal to 6 um, minus which we have 2 times negative 2, which becomes, um, sorry, how to write that, 6, this becomes 6 minus negative 4, because neg 2 times negative 2 becomes negative 4, so 6 minus a minus 4 is the same as saying 6 plus 4, so that's equal to 10. For the next one, 6 minus 2 times a negative 1, so 6, and we're going to look at this, so 2 times negative 1 gets me negative 2, so that's become 6 minus a minus 2, which is the same as saying 6 plus 2, so that's 8. When x is equal to 0, we're going to say 6 minus 2 times 0. Well, 6 minus 2 times 0, that's going to be 6 minus 0, 
so that becomes 6. For the next one, 6 minus 2 times 1. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, so this becomes 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4. And for the last one, 6 minus 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. So now I know that at negative 2, for x, my y is going to be equal to 10. And along the way we go. So, going ahead and trying to put this on here, I notice that um, since my graph does only go up to 5 in my y, I might start here with 2, comma 2. <coughs> so, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 4, so 1 and 4. And when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 6. I can imagine that that one would be right up there, 6. And if you want to, you're thinking, oh, I don't have enough points because they haven't quite fit on the scale properly. I could try another one, 6 minus 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, so that's 6 minus 6, which is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0, giving us that point right there. And again, trying to be careful to draw a reasonably straight line through those three points. Oops, didn't show up. I just have to imagine that you guys can do that much nicer on a piece of paper with an actual ruler. It's quite tricky on this screen. That's a little bit better. So this one is going to be equation B. So again, when we say y is equal to 6 minus 2 times x, you can get any point along that black line. For our last example, kind of a tricky one here, but let's take a look at this. Just tricky because it's got a half in it, but don't worry too much. We can write that out as y is equal to 1 half times x plus 3. So again, making our table x first, then y. I might start with things. And just because I've got a little bit of intuition, if I know I have to divide or times by a half. I might pick even numbers just because that's way easier to deal with. So what happens if I do x is equal to 2, x is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 2? See what kind of points I get. So 1 half times 2 plus 3. 1 half times 2 is 1 plus 3 equals 4. For the next one, 1 half times 0 when x is equal to 0 plus 3. Half times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. And for this one, 1 half times a negative 2 plus 3 equals... Well, 1 half times a negative 2 is going to be a negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is going to be 2. And that gives us 3 points to put on this line. So let's try it out. 2 comma 4, 0 comma 3, and negative 2 comma 2. So, 2 comma 4, 0 comma 3, and negative 2 comma 2. Again, you'll know you're on the right track if it was a complicated one, because if you do it correctly, your three points that you come up with should be on a straight line together. So again, once you've got at least three of them on there, you can actually connect the points with a line. Trying your best to make it look pretty. And get through both axes. Carry that one on a little bit further. And that's rule C. So again, anytime you're doing these problems, 
If you've been given a rule and they ask you to plot it, make yourself a table that's always going to be x first and then y, and then I want you to pick some values for x, nothing too tricky for yourself, and substitute that into the rule to get the matching pair for y, so that you can get a pair of points that have to go together, such as 1, 2. Once you've got a few of those that can fit on the graph, plot them on and connect the points with a line, making sure that you extend it through both axes and end it with arrows.